Welcome back to the channel. Welcome, Gregorio. We Thank are you doing very much. yet another comparison. We've been a whole host of these this year, haven't what we? What a summer. This is about, I think this is like the fourth one, maybe, maybe even the fifth Maybe one. even the fifth. I know yeah. last year we were moaning we didn't do any, and, and here we are. And look at what we've brought to you this year, you lucky buggers. I know. It's entertainment for the masses. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> for, it's, it's for us. <laughs> Lame it's entertainment. It's not the masses. It's entertainment <laughs> for us, if nothing else. If nothing else. And look at the weather. Look at oh. this. This is a beautiful early September evening. I mean, so you, hot. You, you couldn't write, well, it's, it, yeah, but don't mind it's too hot. Oh, I might do. So today we're reviewing a couple of absolute stonkers. We've got the MT-10 SP. We rode the standard version, didn't we? We did a comparison with the best Japanese sports naked and the MT-10 sort of blew away the competition really. It was a different league, test. it was a different league, wasn't it? Absolutely different league. Yeah. So we thought, let's bring the SP out to play, yep. but bring something European for it to play against. Yeah. And what did we bring, Greg? So we've got here the KTM Super Duke Evo. So this is the Super Duke with the electronic suspension as opposed to just the manually adjustable. So they really are direct competitors, aren't they? Yeah. You know, obviously one's Japan, the other's European, but they yeah. are. I'm excited to ride them. It's going to be an amazing review. I know you've been riding them quite a bit over the last week or so. I, I haven't, yeah. so. I, I, I've been enjoying these bikes and it's, it's tough to call for me, but we'll come on to which one we think's best at the end. But the, these are absolutely brilliant. So if you're interested in the MT10 SP and the Super Duke, and quite honestly, why wouldn't you be? Who's not? Grab yourself a cup of tea, make yourself comfortable, and drop the roll the intro. Wishing to sound too excited, Chopsy. What a pair of beauties! It's not a bad one, is it? No, it's we've, all right, done, isn't it? we've done worse reviews, haven't we? We've done worse we really reviews. Are. So these are these are the bikes. I mean, we both love these bikes. We both love a Super Duke. We both owned a Super Duke, haven't we? That's how much we like them. We both owned a Super Duke. This is obviously the 2023 version, the Evo. So got electronic suspension on this WP electronic suspension. And then of course we've got the MT-10 and this is the SP version and that's also got electronic suspension. Obviously the Olin's on the MT-10 and the WP on the Super Duke, but both of these bikes are incredible. I mean, I've had these in the garage for about a week and a half, so I've been playing on these for the last week and a half and they're both absolutely fantastic. You've been on a cruise, Greg, haven't you? So you, you <laughs> you've missed that. You've I've been missing out. You've bikes in my garage and you've not been able to ride them. I know, them. exactly. So, so all that garbage that we've been telling you about, you don't need all that power, middleweights are all you need, they're more engaging. Of course, we're going to throw that in a bin in a minute and go, oh, yeah. forget oh, yeah. middleweights, they've got not, not enough power. You need you one, one of these. these. I did a first ride on this. I'll put a little link at the top. And everybody said, so half the comments are like, if only it looked better, I'd have one. Do you know what I mean? It's really, it's, it's definitely a Marmite machine, the MT-10, when it comes to the looks. But I do think this new one looks much better than the old one, and it looks much better in the flesh as well, doesn't it? And again, it looks much better in this SP paint job as well. But I think we should come on to looks because obviously it's a personal choice, personal thing, isn't it? But I think even the the Super Duke, it's got some odd characteristics from a looks point of view hasn't it i'm not saying it's bad looking so i think this weird yeah maybe a little bit later we'll do another walk around and give our assessment of what they what we think of the looks because they're an acquired taste i know we started this review banging on about the looks haven't we this bike is, is more than the looks you've sort of almost got to get around the looks a bit with this but before you, you start to love it i'll tell you what Wish everyone's best. There's no taking away the instantaneous grunt of the Super Duke. It is unbelievable. <laughs> There's not another bike out there which has got that instant pickup off the throttle, is there? I don't think so. Yeah, it's not the mid-range. It's that bottom end. Just that instantaneous shove is like no other bike. And it's so smooth, so smooth, so refined for a twin. It's incredible, actually. Yeah, that Gen 3, they've, they've, you know, that's evolved over the years, isn't it? And it's now... It's now a package which is so good from, you can't really fault it. I don't think you can fault that bike. Not as a road machine, I think the way it delivers its power, that instant grunt makes for such a good road bike. Yeah, you know, towards the top it loses a bit and, and of course we're going to do our roll-on tests as part of this. Now the MT-10, I mean it isn't particularly light, it's about, I think it's about 214 kilos the MT-10 and you know, it's, it's, it's quite a stable bike, apart from the engine where it tries to lift the front wheel all the time. 
but the chassis is quite predictable, it's stable, you know, it falls into corners, but you do have to give a little bit of counter steering. I yeah. think perhaps it's slightly heavier feeling to ride than the Super Duke, even though I think they're similar weights. I don't think there's that much difference in weight, but I think because the Super Duke's got that aggressive riding position, you've got naturally more weight on the front, and I think it turns a bit easier. Yeah, I think so. The geometry of the whole bike is different, isn't it? Tell us about the ergos on it then. Johnny, are they good? Really good. For a road bike, they're fantastic. It's a really comfortable road bike. The only criticism of the ergos is the seat. It's nice and wide, but it's a little bit thin. So I think you really? will, yeah, you would need the comfort seat. So a couple of hours in the seat and you start to feel it a little bit. But the bars are really high, the pegs are low. You know, it's a really comfortable road bike position. I don't think it'll make the best track bike position. But for a road machine, I think it's I think it's really, really comfortable, apart from the seat. So as for the Super Duke, riding position, really, really nice. P quite a lot of room for the legs, I'd say. Um, but it is cantered forward. Uh, nothing like a sports bike, but sounds like more so than the MT-10. Uh, I think the riding position is quite a good, natural position. It does feel fairly racy, but it is comfy and it's, it's very roomy. The ECT suspension is bloody brilliant. I mean, I didn't like the Olin's EC2 suspension when it first came out. Not the EC2, but the EC1, the original one. The EC2 is a massive improvement. It's the same as what's on the Tuono, the Street Fighter. Yeah. It's an incredibly good system. The early one never really went soft enough. It was always sporty enough, but it never went soft enough. This new one goes soft enough. It goes sporty enough. The way out Yamaha have implemented it is really good, where you've got you know, six different modes, some being automatic, some being manual, which you then assign to a rider mode. Well, my impression so far of the uh, Super Duke, having ridden the non-Evo uh, probably about three or four weeks ago now, I think this feels slightly plusher, actually. And I, I've got to be brutally honest, I don't know what mode I'm in from a suspension perspective, but I am in track mode, so I'm guessing it's probably quite firm. But it feels it feels nice to me. It's not not crashy, but just about right. Goldilocks, the sweet spot. There you go, mate. Have yourself an MT10. Look at look at the width of that seat. So there's no problem with the width on the seat of the MT10. Look how wide it is. You know, it actually matches my bum, but it's there's not that much padding in it. Similar width to the Super Duke. But I'd say it's probably even slightly wider looking at it, but not a lot in it. There you go. Have a key. Bloody keyless and that. Have a key. Bloody that is keyless. One thing about the Super Duke that I don't like is keyless. Um, I just don't like it, and I wouldn't even mind. But the key's quite big, so I find it quite annoying. And you, if you put it in your trouser pocket, it's a bit annoying. If you're doing it's a, like track a small day, mobile what, phone, isn't what it? What are you meant to do with that? On a track day, do you know what I mean? You've got it's up the bottom, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the bottom. Oh my God, the dash is tiny. It's not all. It's not all about the size, mate. It's, it's like looking through the dashboard through some binoculars backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, it's one of the things. You know, when did the R1 come out? 2015, and it's the original dash. You know, it is showing its age a little bit. The dash, but I, I don't care about dashboards. I don't care about such things. I'm not interested in that. <laughs> oh, the riding position is really. It's loads more upright. The MT10, isn't it, than the Super Duke? Yeah, it is. It's very different, the riding position, isn't it? Yeah, it is. This, this is like I've been strapped to an angry ant. Yeah, this feels like a muscle bike or something, actually. I think the Super Duke is a much more aggressive machine, you know. So, yeah, it, that, the handling, the position's more aggressive, the throttle response is quite aggressive, that initial response. and Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's bloody good. The bars are a bit wider as well. I think the bars are a little bit narrow, perhaps, on the MT-10. The bars on the MT-10 are definitely narrower. It's a, yeah, it's a completely different thing. Your legs are splayed out, uh, you know, a fair bit more. Yeah, it definitely feels like a different proposition. But the engine is absolutely glorious already. The mid-range is so good. When you get in the mid-range, it's sort of quite instant, isn't it? The way yeah, it's it sort of goes. You've got great off the throttle response from the Super Duke, but you've got amazing mid-range with the MT-10. I haven't tried the MT-10's brakes yet, which has got braided lines, doesn't it, over the standard one, is that right? It has, yeah. They're not European levels, they're not as good as the Super Duke, I can tell you that now. No. But but they're they don't they're not highlighted instantly as the, the poor part of the bike, you know. But the Super Dukes are much better, I can tell straight away. 
you know, the Super Dukes are better. I think it's because it's got the Stylemas. You've still got the Yamaha's own calipers on the Yamaha's, yeah. haven't you? I don't know why they just don't go Brembo. But it's, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Let's put it that way, the MT-10 brakes. The Super Duke is, is much sharper on the handling. It changes direction quicker as well, I think. Probably due to the position and probably due to the wider bars as well. Oh. That's how glorious this big twin though. When you open it up, the noise you get through the airbox. Woo! Oh, that was most enjoyable. Uh, what's interesting with the MT-10 though, is uh, you know, I've only ridden the MT-10 once, and I've not been on this one yet until now, and I instantly feel on, at home on it. It's very, very easy to adapt to, isn't it? Which I like. Yeah, you've really got a feather the throttle on the Super Duke, haven't you? It's so, so aggressive on well, the pickup. Yes, it is. It, it really you've is. You've really got to feather it. Yeah, the suspension is a bit firmer as well, I think. I mean, I've got the Olin set on fully sporty on the MT-10, and I, I have to check what we got set on the Super Duke, but it's, it's, it's definitely a bit firmer in the sporty settings, I think. A bit more support on the Super Duke, maybe. I do like the position on here, it, sort of yeah, le so it, lends its, it lends itself very naturally to sort of hanging off and there's yeah, plenty of grippage on the tank as well, you can really sort of lock yourself in. Oh, that grunt, that V-twin grunt. I don't think the interface is quite as easy on the Super Duke as it is with the MT-10 to get to, get to what you want to know about. And I think when you're in the track mode, it sort of locks some things out a bit as well. The reality is the electronics on both are totally acceptable, aren't they? You can, you know, traction separate from wheelie control. It's got everything you need, is not it? So customizable. They're exactly it. They've both got everything you need. They've both got cruise control. They've both got the slip, you know, the, the MT-10's now got the full R1 electronics package, you know, which is pretty sophisticated. So yeah, there's nothing between them, I don't think, from an electronics point of view. And I think the way it's been implemented on both bikes is actually pretty good as well. Oh, I do love that howl from that, the V-twin on this bike. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's addictive, isn't it? And the quick shift is also really good on both the bikes. I think the quick shift is slightly better on the MT-10, maybe. Not much in it. But I think that's just the nature. I think it's difficult to get a smooth quick shift on a V-twin. It's just easier on a straight four, isn't it? The faster you go on the Super Duke, the more it loves it. <laughs> it, just, <laughs> it just, the faster you go, it's like, come on, come on, give me more. It's a really engaging bike to ride. I think it's, if I was to take one of these on a track day, it would definitely be the Super Duke as, as a track bike, for sure. I agree. I, I think I already can say, it's not that I'm preferring the Super Duke, far from it, too early to say, but I think I personally prefer the riding position of the Super Duke because I find it, this is a little bit upright for me and it, you just feel like a bit of a parachute, I feel. Yeah, no, it's, it's a fair comment. Yeah, as the speeds go up, you do definitely notice that. There you go, a bit of a faster corner. I know we spoke about sort of niggles in the past, haven't we? And you know, things which annoy you with a bike once you've lived with it for a little while. Both of these, I think are absolutely niggle free. They're There's niggle not free. many bikes are niggle free, is there? But I think these two are not on completely niggle free. And I think free. that's the thing. It's unusual, I think, to jump on a bike and just feel totally natural on both of them, really. Yeah. And as you say, there's nothing, sometimes, when you get on a new bike, particularly for the first few minutes, something jumps out as you've been, oh, that's a bit weird, I don't like that. There's nothing, there's, there's nothing. It's, you get on the MT-10, it's just like, oh, this is nice, it's easy, it, all, everything just feels, but the only, my only criticism is that clutch needs to be a bit low, but that's a <laughs> spoon minute job, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's fine, but the, you know, the clutch, the reach is perfect, the clutch action's lovely. Same on the Super G, you just get on it and just think, oh, this is lovely, you know, it's, yeah, there's not a lot, there's not a lot to not like on both of these bikes. And I have to say, the, the fit and finish of the MT-10, yeah, you're right, and that, that's, that's there's nothing on it where you look at, and this one's got the GB Racing crash protection it's as well, beautiful. Which, which just looks nice. It's beautiful. I love, I love the swinging, swinging arm. arm. Oh, I yeah, do as well. I do. It just, it's lovely. It just looks 
really good quality, doesn't it? And it's gonna last, isn't it? An MT10, Yamaha, you know, they, they are built well, aren't they? Little belly pan on the SP as well, which I think helps with the look. So is there nothing there then on the stock? No, one? there's nothing just, there. Just the oil cooler there, yeah, is it? Yeah, exactly. It looks lovely, doesn't it? It looks much better, doesn't it? Yeah, with it does. The, it with really, the I know it's only a small thing, but actually, it just finishes it off. It just looks like something's missing, doesn't it? And I have to say, even on the Super G, it looks a bit like there's something missing. I know you've got the pipes, so it does fill the void a bit, but that looks cleaner, doesn't it? The MT10's a little bit bloated at the middle isn't it because of no, its but I think it looks R1 origins to, to the uninformed it looks almost intimidating with that engine bulging out of the frame to be honest I think it looks I think it looks cool I like the single sided swing arm on the Super Duke that gets my vote every time it just looks lovely doesn't it yeah it does it particularly does. when you get rid of that it's just going to look amazing 200 section rear tyre which I guess that's, that's got 190. 190, so 190. Is it? one thing I found actually this is a 200 and you actually I found myself running out of tyre a little bit on this. These really? are brand new when it went on. I'm not saying like a hero, but because it's a 190, and I think it's a, is it a 55, but it's just not got that much tyre there. I th I'd probably fit a 200, I think, if it was mine. Yeah. Just give me a bit more tyre, so I'm getting very close to the edge. But alternatively, you could slow down. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a little swap back. Right, let's have a little, little swap oh, back. Oh, I need the key. I need the key. Oh, bloody key. No, Here yeah, we go course. again. Oh, yeah, but you cantered over on the Super Duke. I'd say a fair bit more on the bar do feel I'd say probably a good inch and a half wider in total if I bought an MT10 I'd have to do a few little mods I think do you know I'd, I'd change the bars maybe a flatter bar make it a bit more aggressive um, yeah they're, 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 that's what I quite like about the idea of it so I think there's quite a lot you could do to it I think your clutch could be malfunctioning there Greg there's quite a lot you could do to to make it your own let's say yeah, it's, it's definitely a little bit more locked to the road, the, the MT10. It's, it's not as, I'll say the word flighty, it's not as agile, is it? It takes a little bit more effort, change direction. Yeah. But it's very stable, it's very stable. Listen to this though. Bang! Let's listen to that. It's loud. They sound cool, don't they? Yeah. It's quite a tall first gear on the MT10, there's quite a lot of clutch slipping involved. To pull away that'll be one of a few few criticisms but well, just in case you're getting used to it, i suppose not really a criticism 50 mile an hour 50 third. i've got 40 50. then you'll think you're 40, right 40 40 40 you, you count it in three two one go <laughs> let's do 20 in second then okay so ready, Jim. in three, two, one, go! Woo! Had to be off, it's going to go in the hedge. <laughs> I jumped a little bit there as well, I jumped there. Let's do, it, do that again. Second gear, 20 mile an hour. Three, three two, two, one, one go! go. You damn me, but it, it, you initially go whizzing away, and then as the revs increase on this, it starts to close, not close the gap, but reduce the amount you're pulling away. And by the time you're in the mid range, I think I'd actually start to pull you in if we were to leave. You reckon? Them open. Should we do a quick stop of the bike? Just do a quick stop yeah, of the bike. Yeah, do that. I'll tell you what, though, this is bloody fast. <laughs> it's it is fast when you do it. Yeah, when you do that. It's <laughs> you were st even with the wheelie control on, it was still oh, coming that? up, wasn't it? <laughs> Three. Two, one, go! Woohoo! I did, I did jump a little bit there. I, I did a little bit of a jump. You cheater! That would be not enough to make a difference, I don't think, but we better just do it again. Three, two, one, go! Oh, she's quick, the old Super Duke's got that initial pull, isn't it? That's what does it. That little initial jump. What a beauty. Not much in it. I think the Super Duke's just got it, let's be honest. I think the Super Duke is faster. I think it's as simple as that, isn't it? Yeah, it is faster. It's got more power and they weigh similar, so it kind of stands to the reason. But it instantly moves and this is, a, you know, it's got a little bit of hesitation and then yeah, it's just quicker. I mean, it's as simple as that, isn't it? Not massively. It's close. So, so basically, the, the review's done. It's over. It's the Super Duke. 
don't get too roasty, don't get too roasty. What I'm is really impressive thinking. though, what is impressive is how good was the wheelie control then? When Amazing. he's sort of keeping it under control. When the, the dune came up a little bit and I was a bit scared, I was covering the rear brake just in case, but yeah, it was all in check. Oh, so, what, what an evening, mate. What an evening. That was... Such good fun. Pretty special, wasn't it? I mean, Such it's, it's not very often you get to test these bikes back to back like that. No. And well, I've been had both these bikes in the garage, when I've had to go out and I've been to ride down to Weymouth or whatever, in my head, I've been like, I'm going to take the MT-10 out of the two. Really? But I haven't spent that much. I didn't ride the Super Duke that much, but... Do you think that's because you'd already ridden the Super Duke, the non-Evo version, quite a bit, so therefore the novelty factor is, yeah, you know, maybe? Or is it because the MT-10 is just grabbing you that much? It's just like, I want to grab the keys for that because it's amazing. It's a, it's a bit of both, I think. Yeah. So I, I've, but, but riding them back to back tonight, I was sort of all geared up to say, I think the MT-10's my favourite. Yeah. But after riding this tonight and going back to back, so it's always brilliant to do it back it to back. It is good to, yeah. You, you notice that the Super Duke is a much more sort of dynamic bike, I want to call it. Yeah, it handles better. I think the difference, the, the noticeable difference, uh, for me, they're both sporty, yeah. but the MT-10 feels like a really well handling muscle bike. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 it, and, it, and when I say muscle bike, I'm thinking about like CB1300s of old, that, that sort of thing. It handles loads, loads better than that, but the riding position is much more traditional. Yeah. You're upright, it's comfortable, not comfortable at high speed, I wouldn't say, no, for prolonged high no. speed, but it's very comfortable. Whereas the Super Duke is a much more sporty, dynamic feeling, certainly the ergonomics. It's got wider bars, yeah. you're canted forward. It just feels, I mean, they're ready to race. That's their logo, yeah. isn't it? And it feels ready to race. It changes direction quicker, doesn't it? It does, you, it, you and it feels, yeah. It think just, about it and it changes direction. It feels more nimble. So the weight of these Definitely two are similar, nimble. aren't they? I mean, the Super Duke must be a bit lighter given it's a twin. Yeah, I think it's a tiny bit lighter. Yeah. But, but it feels quite a bit lighter yeah, and well, quite a bit more nimble, I would say. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it feels so planted. I'm very, very impressed as well more so than I thought I would be with the adjustable suspension oh, on this. Yeah, yeah okay. I think it's good. It yeah, feels, yeah. It's so plush. I mean, yeah. there is nothing to complain about would, on the suspension of either Would you spend the extra, though? Would you get the standard one? If you I don't think one. I would spend the extra personally no. because I think you can set up the standard one so well and get it to your... So I, I wouldn't. I, I don't think it's worth the extra to me personally. Yeah. But if you're the sort of person that does track days and you want to do a bit of cruising and you just want the convenience of just changing the setup, yeah, then... Yeah. You know, it's certainly not a waste of money. No. That's I, for sure. I, I agree 100%. Yeah. I wouldn't get the Evo version of the Super Duke. I'd get the standard one. Yeah. Which is odd because if we bought an MT10, we exactly, would get the SP yeah, and not exactly. the base one. I, I would get yeah. the SP, but maybe not just for the suspension, but the other things you get with the SP, like the belly pan, the paint job. The paint job's lovely. Yeah. I wouldn't. You, all you get with the Evo no. on this is just the suspension. Yeah. I know it's. I think it's only fifteen hundred pound extra, so it's not masses of money. But I think I'd get the. Uh, the, I'd, the I'd, I'd get the standard, but I would definitely get the SP like you if I got the MT10. Yeah. And and I think it just looks a lot nicer. The paint job, it yeah. just sort of suits the bike, doesn't it? The paint job yeah. and the Olins. Whether you need the Olins versus the standard one, it's definitely better than the standard MT10. But they look so gorgeous as well, don't they? I know. Yeah. The gold is the gold. I mean, green. I couldn't drive through town for. I couldn't see a thing because all the knickers are here, me. <laughs> <laughs> Could we bought that screen, that visor cleaner, wasn't it? <laughs> when are you going to call it then? So, given everything, or you're not ready to call it uh, yet? Not I, quite there. I'm, I, it's yeah. I oh, it's really, really tough for me because Make I, the decision. I've, if it came to what one do I want to take out for a ride, I've been taking that. So, okay. if, if you're judging it by which one you want to go out and ride more, it's been the MT10. Yeah. I prefer the looks of the Super Duke. I actually, prefer the riding position of the Super Duke. I prefer the dynamics of the bike is better yeah. when you compare them back to back like that. But yeah. I've just really enjoyed the MT10. Yeah. So it's really tough. But, but, but I think what we're saying is, or what you're saying is, they're both very, very good in their own right, which they are. Yeah. But you're here to do a comparison, so you have to call it. I which one, one would you recommend to your careful, loyal subscribers? <laughs> you need to try both, because I think they're... No, they're, they're, he's no, not answering they're, the question. They're, they're, he's trying, not, he's not they're trying the to do different things. If I wanted to do track days, which I do want to do track days on the naked, then I think really you've got to go Super Duke, because it'd be much better on track yep. than the MT-10. If I got an MT-10, I'd want to change the bar position. I'd want to play around with it. I'd maybe want to change the back end to an R1 back what, end. What, turn into a Super Duke? <laughs> <laughs> If you said to me which bike do I want to ride home tonight, yep. I'll take the MT10. Right, so you're, but is that your I decision? I think I'll go MT10. Yeah, I can't believe it, but I think I'm going MT10. Are you? Well, Are I'm, you? I'm crushed that yet again, one of your comparison reviews offers your viewers <laughs> no intellect or intelligence at all, because I'm going to go for the Super Duke. <laughs> and I'm going for the Super Duke because 
in all regards, is just slightly better. It handles slightly better, it's more nimble, it's a little bit quicker. I can't um, argue that the riding position is just a bit more yeah. dynamic yeah. and therefore, you know, it feels a bit more current. The screen, you know, just the screen yeah. on it is bigger, uh, it's uh, quite small. And so, um, you know, I'm sorry to say, it's his no, channel. I think but he doesn't really know what I, he's talking I, about. I, I think you're right. <laughs> That's the thing. I actually think you're right. I can't yeah. argue with that. I think he's right. But I think once you ride one of these, it gets under your skin a bit. No, the more it's time good. you spend it's on good. it, the more you love it. And there's, there's, I, I can see why there's such a massive following of MT10s. A lot of people yeah, who've okay. got them absolutely love them yeah. because there's just something I can't quite put my finger on yeah. about the bike, which is no, just it's brilliant. Really it's brilliant. It sounds amazing. The mid-range is so addictive. Yeah, but I think it's more than that. It's like, I don't know. It's a way, I don't know. I can't yeah. put my finger on why no, fair enough. it's so nice once you spend a bit more time on it. But there we go. I mean, don't, if I end up buying a Super Duke, don't say. <laughs> oh no, I'm going to go bananas. <laughs> I'm going to replay this video over and over and <laughs> over again. Go out. <laughs> but there's so many other factors, you know, which one, but because I'd want to do track days with the naked, maybe I would go this, but if, which one I want to ride home would be that. So Very it's good. so, so close to me. For yeah. Me. Well, good. Well, thanks All for inviting me. Yeah, again, yeah, really no, enjoyed it. It's been a brilliant one. I don't think yeah. else we've got planned. Everyone keeps moaning that we need to get on and do this R1250 RS review against the uh, Moto Guzzi. Okay. Mandela. Yeah, so I'll that, try I, and sort that out. That sounds like a really good review. That. Both shaft yeah, drive, both yeah. twins. That's got to be a good comparison, yeah. hasn't it? Actually, I'm sure they're both be very interesting bikes. And it'd be nice to do something that's not just hooligan territory yes. and something a little bit more and gentlemanly it might be something like. Something a little bit nicer later on in the year when yeah. the weather changes a bit, a bit more yeah. touring, a bit more screen. Yeah, frontage, no, definitely. Sort of definitely. So, well, if you're good. interested in that, we will try and make that happen. But in the meantime, have fun, enjoy your bikes, enjoy the rest of this summer we've got, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers, Cheers guys. guys.